January 15, 2022. Uh, just another day in history, <laughs> of course. So um, I want to share um, some of my life and how this and any other day that has uh, really been in the last... Um, and just about every day in my life has been historical to me. It kind of brings along my my uh, my everything that I've uh, accumulated, all my experiences, and um, I have a meaning to every just about every day of my life. It's it's been a fascinating journey, and one of the one of the things that propelled me or was with me a lot through most of my life is the game of soccer. Football. Football is dumb. Uh, it's interesting. I, I never played any kind of organized game in, in soccer as a boy. I was 12 when, when I left and um, I never owned a soccer ball. Um, And when I came to this country at the age of 12, um, is actually, I saw the mo one of the most important games um, that was played by also refugees of the Sun Hungarian uh, national team, Puskás, Grocis, Kocsis, all those people that were incredible, were taken up uh, after the revolution in 56 by Madrid, uh, Rio, I think it was uh, Madrid Real or something like that. Rio Madrid or something. It was a Spanish team that, uh, that all of those great Hungarians went to and contributed their talent. So I went to see one of those games when they were in New York. And there was one play that was so incredible that actually uh, gave me everything I needed for to play soccer. Um, my seat, I was sitting with my father and we were sitting behind the, the goal, in the, in the end zone, so to speak, behind the goal. And um, this particular play that has such an important effect on me was um, uh, evolving from front of me going towards the other end. And it was a, a goal kick uh, that was kicked um, to the, to, from the right side of the goal, right front of me, and to the halfback um, uh, going away towards the other direction. And the halfback didn't let it bounce. He took it out of the air, kicked it to the right wing. Um, the left halfback kicked it to the right wing and the right wing, without letting the ball hit the ground, hit it to the to uh, Kochish, um, who was the center forward and he didn't let the ball hit the ground. He took it out of the air and, and, and kicked it to the goal and made the goal. This was the most incredible thing that of course I never, it wasn't, this was before videos, or I'm sure it's available and some, somebody filmed it. Uh, with me, it was only my mind's eye my mind's camera that took that shot. So three kicks from the goal to a half back to the wing to Kochish. The ball never touched the ground and they made the goal. Anyway, so this gave me, because of my seat, I was lucky enough to be sitting in that most people wouldn't like, they want to be on the 50 yard line or something, but that's where our seats got. That's where that's what we could afford at that time. 
my father could afford for a, for that soccer game. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, anyway, it had made an incredible effect on me. Because of where I was sitting, I had this big picture view, and I can never forget that goal, how amazing it was, and how what that meant, and how that, what that means, not only for their talent, their abilities, but to be able to see the big picture of this, of this evolution of a goal that each of those players um, completed. So the impression that it gave me that it's so important to see the big picture of any game. And that is what I actually brought to, uh, to my soccer teams that I played on after that. You know, I, I, I don't even remember um, the first year. I think I, think I was um, in ninth grade, I guess, when I first went out for soccer. I don't remember some of the details, but I didn't have any other um, previous um, uh, experience any more than most of the kids uh, who joined the soccer team from Hungary. Um, I mean, from in, from Summit, New Jersey is where I was. So, but interestingly enough, so okay, so, um, senior year we achieved uh, state championship in our class. And that same year, my senior year, my sister was dating a Hungarian boy that was graduating uh, in, from West Virginia. Um, and when he realized that uh, I was uh, on a soccer championship team, and, and his school, Davidson Hopkins College, it, uh, was... Uh, starting football um, instead of not uh, starting soccer as the main sport after it was just the, the football was just eliminated because they couldn't afford all the football uh, expenditures so make the short story shorter <laughs> I I got a scholarship partially because of of uh, my abilities to that evolved from playing soccer, and um, also because of swimming, I was also a state champion my senior year in swimming. So I'm not leaving that out because they both kept playing crucial things in my life. But this is the football story. So um, I get to Davis and Elkins College, and. Um, Lo and behold, uh, we worked in my four years there. Um, uh, we became our section champion. And uh, finally, two years later, after, after I graduated, the college uh, became such a powerhouse uh, that they actually became national champions. Um, but for me, okay, so that was that was a part of the soccer plane. But as a side story, how soccer affected my life. Um, my sophomore year, um, uh, ended up uh, with uh, my getting married to my girlfriend. And um, the following year, in 1964, um, my junior year, um, it was also West Virginia's 200th anniversary. And the school was the grounds for the uh, Mountain State Forest Festival of the 200th anniversary of, of uh, West Virginia being a state. Um, and that summer, um, 
as I was walking across the campus, the director of the play, Claire Fiorentino was her name, she was, um, um, she was a drama teacher uh, in the school. And, uh, and she was the one that wrote the screenplay, or not the, the stage play, for the Mountain State Forest Fest Festival. And during the summertime, as I was walking across campus, she comes running up to me and she said, I'm so glad to run into you. I, I'm, uh, and she told me what she was doing, that she was doing this play. And she asked me if I would play the lead. Um, and it required singing and dancing. So I was to play Mr. West Virginia. The play was taking uh, place, kind of a, a historical <laughs> dance and song um, uh, um, of the importance of West Virginia, the evolution of West Virginia and the coal mining and all of that evolved over the 200 years and what West Virginia played um, towards uh, the Union and um, celebrating that. And uh, so I asked her, I said, well, what makes you think I can act? And her answer was, I've seen you play soccer. Wow. Soccer put me into this, this position of being able to play uh, on the stage, representing this epitome of Mr. West Virginia. <laughs> anyway, so an inter coincidentally, the play was actually put on Mount State Forest Festival. It was October 1st, um, 1964. And October 1st, 1964 was the date my uh, first daughter, Adrian, was born. So I was putting actually a, a play on <laughs> for her arrival because she wasn't able to see it. She only heard about it later. Okay, so that's another point. How? Because later on, of course, the stage and all the worlds of stage became an important part of my life. So, okay, now fast forward from there. Um, after I graduated, I, you know, and my life went on. I, I went into New York. I was in the, I was in the, the, the uh, advertising business in New York. And then I was in the theater in New York. And then um, after uh, the theater, uh, I was also got involved with a film um, that was uh, done by um, an NYU student directed film. Um, she saw me in a in a play that we put on in in my theater in in, in New York. Um, she um, uh, asked me to be in her movie, and. This is a side story, but the movie ended up being uh, nominated for an Academy in, in the short dramatic subjects. It was called, And You Act Like One Too. Okay, I'll, I'll talk more about that at another time, but this is still a soccer story. So um, this movie, she invited me out to, to come to Los Angeles uh, for the Academy Awards, but I couldn't make it out, I couldn't afford to make it out because by then I was just uh, in the theater, involved in my own theater, and we were doing stuff. So anyway, um, but later on that year, and this is 10 years later, uh, 2000, two, uh, uh, 1975 is then when I went out to Los Angeles 
And to make the story short there, my soccer life, um, I, I started to uh, uh, play for a league. Uh, it wasn't the Hungarians of Los Angeles, but I did meet for the theater. I met the Hungarian um, director um, for the theater in Los Angeles. But um, I got introduced to a, a, a soccer team that was kind of like the Hollywood people team. Uh, it was, um, and they had a, it was a very, very strong industrial league of soccer teams. And I was on the, uh, on one of the, the Hollywood teams. Actually, we were called Pacific Palisades. That was our name. But everybody in there was from the film business, basically. And, uh, or related. And, um, uh, so, on this team, I got to meet uh, a couple of interesting characters, like Sean Connery. He, uh, he didn't play on our team. He played on another team. And so I played against him. I guessed him and and uh, um, a number of others. It, that's not the story, isn't that? But it just get it it further got me to meet um, people. I ended up doing a, a commercial for Michelob playing soccer. I was hired because I was a soccer player, and um, so that offered me a few thousand dollars. I mean, it was like. These were the gifts that were just coming out of me playing, having played soccer, uh, being rewarded for the effort that I put in. Anyway, so um, that, and then um, later on, I went. I decided to coach um, a soccer team in in the Palisades, um, an AYSO team. So, so that got me to meet other soccer players, other everybody. I mean, it was just the, the mothers, the fathers of the, the soccer players were all interesting people in that area. So I got to meet those. It was just everything. We just kept mushrooming out. And what are the, but I'm just sticking around the, the point of soccer. So, um, and one of those games that I was playing those, those times, um, uh, I met uh, a girl that was watching me play, and I, I, I got hit because I got distracted by her on this film, and, and I got hurt. I, I went up and I got kicked and I broke an ankle and and uh, ended up uh, twisting the other one and my head, my wrist. So I was really I was out for out of soccer for a while, and um, um, so and it, this this uh, woman, this beautiful woman that I just met, was um, watching the game. And she took me up, took me over to her home, and put me in her bathtub, and ended up taking me to the doctor. Uh, and uh, she uh, ended up uh, uh, being the mother to my next two children. Um, if it wasn't for soccer, I might not have gotten. <laughs> into this family um, that uh, um, was a very unusual family. Um, they were the Edgington people, the Edgington Oil Company. And uh, this, this beautiful young lady that took me, took care of me from being injured in soccer, um, we ended up making a whole other life together. And uh, so my second set of children uh, 
is basically attributable to 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 soccer as well. Um, okay, so fast forward now a little bit um, to uh, graduation time. Graduation time in the uh, in the world of soccer. Um, I played for that league until I was maybe like 40, 41, um, about 10 years, about 10 years on that league. And uh, I mean, yeah, many games, many interesting people. And so uh, there were some other injuries and all of that stuff, but I survived it all. But what did soccer give me? Wow, I mean, it's 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 a world game. It's one of the, it's the most popular game in the world because popular sport in the world because of of how fluid it is and how how you play the game is uh, each 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 time you have the ball. It's improvised. It's not like other games like like football. They have games set up. There's no setup. There's there's um, a certain exchange that takes place between team players that uh, and switching sides, going from one side to the other. But it's pretty much also always improvised. Every moment is improvised, and um, uh, it's the ability to see the big picture. It's to be able to go up and and look back down at your life, which at that time is all played out on this field um, with 22 players and um, and how it goes. It's, it's very much uh, um, attributable to uh, how you see life, how you play a game like soccer you're gonna that's how you're gonna play in life and uh, the most important thing that I, that I got from it was this this ability to see the big picture of what's going on and, uh, and for now in this January 15 2022 uh, to be able to see the big picture of what's going on in the entire world and around you very specifically is um, is the key. So I just wanted to introduce that idea, the big picture idea for all of us to be able to develop because if we're going to go anywhere worthwhile, we have to be able to see the big picture. So I will share my next response as to where might we go from here, knowing the big picture.